Dear students, I am Shiva, Faculty of Physics. I hope you are doing well in your studies with the help of these videos named as BRICS. In the last session, we studied the definition of electric potential and how can we calculate the electric potential due to the dipole at its axial point. Now, in this session, in this episode, we are going to deal with one important topic that is electric potential for the arbitrary point as well as for the equatorial point both for dipole only. So first of all here uh, we can see this is electric dipole having the total length 2L. We are seeing one point P. This point P lying where? This point P lying on equatorial point. Nothing but this point P lying on the perpendicular bisector of this dipole. Say O is the center of the dipole. Since OP is the perpendicular bisector, what is the distance from O2 minus Q? The distance from O2 minus Q is L. Similarly, what is the distance from O2 plus Q? The distance from O2 plus Q also L only. And the distance of the point P from the center of the dipole is R. At that time, what is the length of this side? So this is square root of L square plus R square with the help of Pythagoras theorem. Similarly, here also what is the distance from plus Q to P? This distance also L square plus R square. Okay? Now, minus Q plus Q are behaving as what type of charges? Minus Q and plus Q are behaving as source charges. Already we know whenever you know the source charge, suppose here I am taking the source charge is Q and this is some point P lying at the distance R from the source charge then what is the potential at point P in the field created by this source charge it can be calculated with the help of this formula V is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught into Q by R where Q indicates source charge Remember, the source charge you must and should be substitute with sign. If this is plus Q, take here also plus Q. If this is minus Q, take this one also minus Q. Why? Potential is either positive or negative or zero. That one depends upon the context. Already we know the distance between the point P and source charge is R. This is the distance. Now, we can utilize this formula in order to calculate the potential at point P due to this minus Q as well as plus Q. Now, see the diagram carefully. So, what is the V due to minus Q? What is the V due to minus Q? Okay. So, what is the formula? Apply this formula there. What we can write? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into minus Q divided by this distance. What is the di distance? Now, here you are seeing as square root of L square plus R square. Okay. Similarly, what is the potential due to this another source charge plus Q at point P? Now, again we can utilize same formula. Now, what we can write? V due to plus Q is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q divided by square root of L square plus R square. Potential is the scalar. That's why at point P, the resultant potential is simply the summation of V due to minus Q and V due to plus Q. That's why here what we can write. So, V is equal to V is equal to V due to minus Q plus V due to plus Q. Now, substitute these expressions, these values here. What we can write? V is equal to minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q divided by square root of L square plus R square. Simply what is V due to plus Q? Now write down that expression here. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q divided by square root of L square plus R square. So clearly we are seeing both are cancelling with each other. That's why we will get the value of V is 0. Nothing but for the point P, what is the value of this potential? That is 0. 
not only this point P, suppose I am taking, suppose here I am labeled three points, one, two, three, for one, two, three, for these three points, what is the potential? Observe carefully, this potential also having the value equal to zero only now. That's why V1, V2, V3 also equal to zero, not only one, two, three, every point every point that we can take on the perpendicular bisector of this uh, dipole having the same potential. Now, already here, if you assume one surface, now assume one surface that is passing through OP. Now, visualize yourself, one infinite surface passing through this OP and infinite in dimensions. Visualize one surface passing through this OP in infinite length or infinite dimensions for that surface at each and every point what is the potential that is v equal to zero that's why the surface now that we are assuming through this equatorial line we can say with this name equipotential surface so what do you mean by equipotential surface equipotential surface is nothing but the surface where you are seeing the potential is same at each and every point in the current situation, if you assume one surface that is passes through the equatorial line for that surface, clearly we are seeing the potential is zero and each and every point on that surface the potential is zero. That's why that equatorial plane only we are saying now equipotential surface. Nothing but for the uh, dipole, you are assuming a surface passes through the perpendicular bisector is an example for the equipotential surface. Okay, now V is 0. Na? If V is 0, what is delta V? Delta V also 0. Now, one time, one time visualize the definition. In the last video, we have studied na? what is the definition of delta V? Now, delta V we can define as delta U by Q minus W E by Q plus w a by q okay so what is this this is delta v for equipotential surface what is delta v delta v is equal to zero substitute here what we will get if delta v is equal to zero delta u also zero similarly if delta v is equal to zero minus w e also zero so similarly, if delta V is equal to 0, again what will become 0? W A also 0. So that's why we have what we can conclude. Suppose if you are moving a charge Q on this equatorial line or on this equipotential surface, for that charge Q, delta U is 0. Nothing but change in the electrostatic potential energy is 0. Similarly, for the charge negative of the work done by the electrostatic force is zero work done by the applied force also equal to zero now one time recall the theorem based on the work and kinetic energy theorem with the help of that work and kinetic energy theorem then what we can write net work done is equal to kf minus ki where ki k indicates kinetic energies now what is the work done? Suppose I am moving one charge on this equatorial plane, nothing but on equipotential surface. Now that charge is under two types of forces. One is our applied force, another one due to the field created by these two source, uh, two source charges, minus Q plus Q. Both of these source charges are creating some electrostatic force and you are moving the charge Q along the equipotential surface with the help of that applied force. Totally two forces under in action. That's why here what we can write? Work done W net nothing but work done by the applied force plus work done by the electrostatic force that is equal to Kf minus Ki. What is the work done by the applied force? Zero. What is the work done by the electrostatic force? Zero. That's why here we will get 0 plus 0 is equal to Kf minus Ki. Nothing but Kf minus Ki is equal to 0. Simply it will become Kf is equal to Ki. Now what is the kinetic energy? 
half into mass of the test charge nothing but the charge that you are moving over the equipotential surface mass into speed of the charge square that is final speed half into m into initial speed of the charge that is vi square now this one this one cancels half of also here gets cancelled what we get vf is equal to vi now what is the message regarding to that equation if you are moving any charge on that equipotential surface whatever may be the magnitude that we can apply on that charge irrespective of that magnitude the speed of the charge always constant nothing but suppose if you are applying force to newton when the speed is 2 meter per second even you can apply the force of 1 lakh newton still the speed what 2 meter per second why you are saying based upon this observation that's why here what we can say on this ep potential surface v is equal to constant v is equal to constant here v indicates speed not potential okay here v indicates speed that speed is constant for the particle moving on the equipotential surface so that's why finally what we can conclude this perpendicular bisector is nothing but equipotential surface for that and speed is constant okay this is the case for equipotential point now come to one more situation here here you are seeing point p but this point p you are seeing at some distance r and this is the center of dipole the sen the line connecting o and p making what angle with the orientation of the dipole that is theta now you need to calculate the electric potential at this arbitrary point now electric dipole moment is vector na so any vector we can resolve in any direction now in our case resolve this vector p bar in this direction so what is the component of the dipole moment p bar in this direction this is p cos theta now what is the component of this dipole moment p bar in this direction this is p sin theta nothing but this single dipole this single dipole we can visualize as two dipoles one dipole having the dipole moment p cos theta and another dipole having the dipole moment p sin theta so this is one dipole you can imagine okay so suppose here i am giving some dotted line so this is one dipole now we can visualize as having the dipole moment p cos theta on that on that dipole only you are seeing this point p so that's why p will become what type of point p will become axial point for this dipole okay that's why here what we can write uh, now p is axial point na now v axial is equal to what is v axial v axial is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into p cos theta by r square in the past session we derived an expression for the axial point of the electric dipole one time referred that video we have proved this one clearly there now this is v axial there after for this p sin theta here also we can visualize one more dipole this dipole having the dipole moment p sin theta for this dipole this point will become what type of point point lying on the perpendicular bisector just now we discussed na here that type of point for that type of points nothing but v equatorial what is the value of this uh, electric potential zero already proved na here okay this result only this result only i am using here why this point p lies on the perpendicular bisector now what is the resultant potential resultant potential v since v is scalar that's why total potential at point p is simply addition of these two this v is equal to v axial plus v equatorial what is v axial v axial now we can write as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into p cos theta by r square plus 0 results simply this expression on there okay now check this expression gives correct values for the given values of theta 
Suppose here I am taking the value of theta is 0 degrees. Whenever you are taking the value of 0 degrees, how it will become 0? So in order to make the value of theta is equal to 0 degrees, move this point P in this manner. Okay, exactly this point P now falls where? This point P falls on this axial point. For the axial point, what is the value of V? In order to find out that value of V, simply here put it, theta is equal to 0 degrees. If theta is equal to 0 degrees, what is the value of V? V is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught into P by R square. Suppose this point P, I am taking exactly on the equatorial point. So whenever you are taking this point P on the equatorial point or perpendicular bisector, this value of theta will become pi by 2. Nothing but if you are taking theta is equal to pi by 2, substitute here theta is equal to pi by 2, what is the value of V? That value of V is equal to 0. So in this session, we studied how can you calculate the electric potential due to the electric dipole on this equatorial point as well as we studied in this electric dipole what is the equipotential surface and what happens to the particle when this particle is in motion on that equipotential surface as well as we studied how can we calculate the electric potential for any arbitrary point of the electric dipole as well as how we can derive the previous results here in the next session we will meet with one more new concept that is how can we calculate torque acting on the dipole. I hope you understood this session well. We will meet with one more concept in the next session. Thank you for watching.